you know, the people in my neighborhood, the bus picks up their kids, they go to public school, they come home, they're inundated with, you know, stupid amounts of homework that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, whereas a lot of my more successful friends or my, my rich friends, they, they tend to send their kids to private schools or gifted schools, or they're actually getting really high-end tutors on top of that. Um, the way they vacation is different. Uh, for instance, a lot of my friends that might live in my neighborhood, like my neighbors, their idea of a vacation is going to a theme park, which nothing wrong with that necessarily. Whereas myself and my wife and some of our other friends, their idea of going on vacation is going somewhere educational and incorporating education into it. Maybe it's about going to a museum. So I would definitely see among differences in demographics that people that tend to be more successful financially in life teach their kids and expose them to things differently than people that are not as successful financially. So the non-successful financial ones, they're taking them to experiences that are marketing experiences. Right, absolutely. I mean, go into a theme park, and like I was just in Las Vegas recently. I view that as a theme park for grown-ups. And the whole experience is controlled and manipulated to extracting the most amount of money from you as possible, whether it's the $5 ATM, the non-free Wi-Fi, or the fact that you can't walk through a casino without going through the casino, or the fact that they don't have clocks so you can't see how long you've been there, and they don't have windows so you don't realize the passage of time. I mean, that's all manipulated and designed to be a marketing experience. And, and, and the smart people go to Vegas know this. I hardly ever gamble when I go to Vegas. I'm usually down there for conventions and things. But a lot of people don't know that. They don't realize that, and they lose a lot of money that way because of it. You know, it's the messages and influence you want to teach your kids. Now, I'm not saying I won't ever take my kids to Disney World. I'm sure it's, it's an obligatory thing that I'll have to do eventually, which I'm dreading. But, you know, my kids will go to Disney World someday. Um, but we spent a lot of time trying to expose our kids to very educational things. So recently, uh, my wife and our family went on vacation with another family. We went camping. And we went up to uh, National Park Grand Teton in Yellowstone. And we were educating our kids throughout. Now, we had a great time. It was a fun trip. It really was. But we were looking at things from a scientific level. How does a geyser work? What's the difference between a geyser and a volcano? Uh, why is this ground really hot? Why, what is the coloration of the water? What are microorganisms? And even though it was a vacation, my kids learned a lot. They, spent a they learned a tremendous amount. And again, we're deliberately trying to expose our kids to things that I certainly wasn't exposed to things like that when I was growing up either. It's just my wife and I decided that we, we look forward 15, 20 years and we want to see what are our kids going to look like and what, what ability are they going to have to make good decisions. And it's the things that we expose them to now which are going to help them make good decisions later in life. I think a lot of people, and I've talked to a lot of people you know, through my, my own entrepreneurship show and when I was doing radio and things like that, I've talked to a lot of people that want to be entrepreneurs. And you, I, I, you, I was really surprised to realize how many of these people think being successful in business is an accident or luck. And I run into a lot of people who think it's just accidental, that it's just luck. Wow, you got really lucky. Now, sometimes if you're born into a rich family and your dad can finance you, that helps. That certainly does. Or being fortunate to be born into a family that teaches you entrepreneurship. Like, hopefully my kids will be successful because I have a part in that. But, but so many people don't understand it takes real work and dedication and discipline. And they just think that people who are rich are lucky, and they just something happened to them one day, and they became rich. They don't understand that anybody can be rich if they apply certain disciplines and principles, and, and over time can be. What are some uh, financial tips or basic, what are some skills or some some basic financial bullet points that you're going to want your kids to know that you would recommend to the younger people that are watching this that may be anywhere from 15 to 35 years old, just some basic finance tips that you would, you would impart. I would say the most important thing is with whatever decision you make in life, ask yourself, stop. Before you make the decision, before you hand over your credit card or your cash, stop and ask yourself, will this give me more options in life or will it give me fewer options in life? And every financial decision, or every decision in general, but any decision where you're going to spend money, ask yourself, just take five seconds or ten seconds ago, will making this purchase give me more options in life or less options in life or fewer options in life? And I think that right there will help so many people. 
Um, I'm an entrepreneur, so I, I'm a big believer in you know leveraging other people, you know, providing value, uh, and you know if if you're trading dollars for your hours, that's not going to make you rich. Whereas over time, if you go through and you change the value situation, take control, you could be really successful. And, and I think the most important thing is just stop and think about what you're doing. Will this give me fewer options or more options in life?